Hey there, everyone. Um, so I wanted to go over again, or go over for the first time, how to use Google Meet. Um, so this is a first for me making videos like this, so excuse me if I don't have correct <laughs> video etiquette. Um, I've actually forgotten to turn on my mouse cursor, so you're going to see me do that. I use a little thing called uh, pen attention. Um, so I'm going to put a a little circle on my mouse so you can see what I'm doing. So one of the quickest ways to go to Google Meet, um, unless you want to type it in, which I'll show you how to do it as well, um, is you go up to your app and I've got Meet. I moved it right up to the top. And for any of you who don't know, you can drag things around, things that you use more often. So I'm assuming I'm going to use Meet quite a lot. So I popped it on up here. Um, so you can use this and you can click on it to go to Meet. Alternately, you can type in meet.google.com into a browser window. And I would ask that you make sure that you are signed in to your school account when you're doing this. Make sure that you're already signed in to your school Gmail account because Meet is going to want those permissions, okay? So one of two ways. I can go to the waffle and I can go to Meet that way or I can go to type in meet.google.com up here. And here we are um, at the Meet screen. It's a different picture every time, which I think is kind of cool if you're a visual person. Um, interesting, mouse pointer tools, I'm gonna hide those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna join or start a meeting. So if you were invited to join a meeting, you could probably click in right into it and bypass this screen. If you had a code for a meeting, you could click join here and join, and you can start a meeting here. So I'm going to start the meeting. Uh, and I'm gonna, let's, I don't have a code for a meeting, which is where, this is where you would put the code. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a meeting, I'm gonna call it test, and I'm going to continue. And this is the simplest way to start a Google meeting. And here I am wearing my orange hunting hat, which I forgot to take off. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to hit, well, I'm gonna hit join now, but as you can see, you could start off by presenting at this meeting too. Why did I not take this hat off? I don't know. Um, but I'm going to hit join now. Okay. So right away, you can see that what happens is I get information up because I started the meeting that I can see the joining information. So I could copy this joining info, for example, and then I could go into my Google Classroom and I could join one of my classrooms let's say i go into instructional technology and i can share that link with my class by going to the add button it's a link and then i can paste it okay it says please enter a valid link but it is actually a link so i can add that link um, or i could share it with my class here like that and i could post it and then everybody who clicks on this link in the post will automatically jump straight into this meeting. So that's how you can do that. You can also add people from here. And as you can see, I can add pretty much the entire staff because you're already logged in on your Google um, login. So it's going to recognize all the school emails just like it normally does for anything, really. Um, that's for invite. I can enter a phone number to call from here too, anybody's phone number and I can add people that way, okay? So that lives down here. There's the joining info right there if I ever wanna get back to that. Um, and I'm gonna talk about this attachments tab a little bit later, okay? So there we are, that's how I get my meeting info. That's the name of the meeting and there is the information. Okay, let me move this over a little bit. So I can see that I am in the meeting. If I want to be pinned to the screen, which means that I'm not only, um, I can see myself on my own screen like that, but I'm pinning myself onto everybody who's in the meeting screen. So if you're the teacher, you may want to do that. I can also mute and unmute streams of students uh, down here. I can't do it right now because I don't have anybody else in here, but it's obvious. It's very obvious. And I will help you with that if you're uh, having trouble. Um, this is the people. I can also add people from here, same window. Um, I can go to chat here, and here's where I can start test on. <laughs> here's where I can start typing in there, and I can press send, and you, you'll be able to see in the chat what's going on there. 
So you can flip back and forwards between the two. If you want to come out, you can just click on the screen and then you'll see a little detail. And whoever's speaking, usually the screen will flicker to you. But we can change those settings too. And if you really need to get into that, I will talk to you about that as well. So there's chat, there's people. That's how that menu works. Now, I love this turn on captions thing, and some of you may find that useful. If I turn on captions here, you will see that the screen starts to pick up um, whatever I'm saying. Now, we may, we may have some students who that will be really important for, and I love this part of Google Meet. Um, I don't know if Zoom does the same kind of thing. It may, but um, you can see it's fairly accurate, and it does pick up your voice. So you may want to use this with some students. Um, it would be great, for example, if you're reading a story uh, or something like that. That would be that would be that would be a good thing. But also if you're just giving instruction, um, students can see uh, or read um, if they can't necessarily hear. Um, so and maybe you can make a project out of it. Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to turn them off for now. But that's excellent. I can do that. And ne next to that is the present now button. Um, and I'm going to use a version of this, or I will have used a version of this uh, by tomorrow morning. Um, if I hit present now, I may just want to present a window or I may want to present my entire screen. So I can go in and say it's my entire screen. Um, and Chrome wants to share the contents of your screen with meetgoogle.com. Choose what you'd like to share. So I'm going to share this right now. So I'm sort of double sharing here. I'm presenting my screen while I'm presenting my screen. Um, and I can then go into all of my things, uh, you know, and present whatever I want from there, okay? And then I can go back and I can hit stop presenting and we're back on again. Um, so that's, what ha that's how you can present uh, slideshows, um, documents that you wanna review with the kids, uh, you can do that in what you present on your screen. And if you've pinned yourself to the top, that's what everybody else will see. Um, down here, we have some options to change the layout. So here we can see, you know, I can go with a sidebar. Again, you're really not going to see that much because um, there aren't many people in here. Uh, if I go back to change layout, I could go to spotlight. That means only my screen will be on. So the kids will only see me. If you're the teacher, they're only going to see you. So you may want to do that and then switch it back to automatic. And automatic means that whenever anybody is talking, their screen will become the dominant screen. So if you have a project for your kids, what you might want to do is put it on spotlight while you're delineating the project and then change it to automatic if you're asking them to talk about it. So that's a layout. You can experiment with that. Full screen is full screen. That's obvious. It's going to go full screen. Turn on captions, settings. So here you can see that I'm using the default microphone in my camera, and I'm also using the speakers um, that's actually in my device. You won't have to do too much monkeying around with that. Again, you can see I'm using the camera that's in my computer here. I could change the sound resolution, or actually I can't because my camera is pretty crappy. Um, but if you have a much more higher powered camera, it will show you that you can send in, you know, 1080p high definition. So you don't need to worry too much about these things. I'm just going over the whole platform. Use a phone for audio. So Meet calls your phone so you can lose it and listen to speak to the video call. Um, again, that's just a, you know, a dial in or a call me uh, if you can't do video and you can't be on a computer. Um, report a problem and help are pretty obvious, but I'm your help, basically. Uh, you'd want to always ask myself for help before you actually hit the help button. Um, here, some basic function here. I can turn off the camera, and you can still see the microphone activating on my voice. Obviously, I turned off my voice, and I'm going to turn the camera back on. Um, and that's pretty much it for mastering Google Meet with your students. And there's gonna be a couple of things that I'm gonna to talk to you about um, actually in the meeting, which hopefully you'll retain, but I'll, I'll go over them briefly here, which is um, obviously for privacy reasons, you can't keep everybody, people have the ability to unmute themselves. So students will be able to unmute themselves after you've muted them, okay? Because it would be wrong for you to be able to mute somebody indefinitely. Um, no, I don't want to restart my windows. 
So you're going to want to have a little bit of discipline as much as you can get, um, which could be difficult, but it might be fairly smooth because we're a small school, small class size. Just telling students to mute their mics while they're supposed to be listening to you. Use the spotlight mode or pin yourself to the screen so that they have to be watching you. Um, other things are you're going to want to make sure that you don't open up the call with you not in it. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're ready for the call to go live, that you are ready, that your background is prepared. Be mindful of what you have in the background with regards to your students. Understand that this is a, a window into your house. Um, you know, we've not really had to consider that before. Think about those things. Think about the setting. Think about something you might want to put up in the background. Um, sorry about, you know, the mess in my... Um, what else? Uh, I'm thinking about particular things like, um, yeah, make sure you're the, the person who starts the call. Don't ever start the, the meeting without being present so that you can moderate what's going on with your students. That's kind of cool. I look like I have a, you know, weird eyes. Um, and uh, you also want to make sure you're the last person out of the call that every other student has hung up. Now, they will have the, the ability to rejoin the call just like you. So when you've left, Students may have the ability to rejoin the call if they can still see the link. And it's generally good hygiene to, you know, not have the link be visible anymore. Or, I mean, again, it's a matter of trust. In larger schools, they've been having some issues with students rejoining the call and maybe doing some inappropriate things. Um, for us, uh, I think that you should remind students that these calls are being recorded, um, which they are. You won't be able to access them right away, but they are being recorded deep into your drives. Uh, and Google are working on coming up with a way for us all to see that much more immediately. Uh, Google are also, by the way, working on the muting options for students. They're engineers coding right now very hard to get us some necessary improvements to this platform so that it becomes very, very teacher friendly, very specifically teacher friendly. That will be happening in the next couple of weeks. Um, okay, I don't want to ramble on any more here. I've given you the basics of this. What I want to do now is go into Google Classroom, and I want to talk a bit about how you can make it easy for yourself and for your kids to not have to flip back and forwards between screens um, in order to get through whatever you want to get across in your Google Meet time. So, for example, if I go to Classwork, I'm in my Google Classroom as a teacher, if I go to Google Calendar and I set a time for the, 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 the time where I want to meet with my class. So say I want to meet with my class, um, you know, right here. So I'm going to add the title of my class. If I'm Amy, it might be, you know, MYP3, uh, ELA. Um, yep, three to four sounds good. Uh, I'm going to want to go to more options. And I want to add conferencing. I'm going to put in a Hangouts Meet. And there's my Hangouts Meet, and there's all my information there. Uh, so what I can do is I can copy this information. There is the, the, the Hangouts Meet. I can, I can actually edit it here, too. I can, you know, I can copy the information. I can do all kinds of stuff, right? But what I can also do if I'm running a class and I know that I want to introduce my student to documents. Now, you could also add those documents to your class for students to see. So they could flip back and forwards between the Meet screen and the Classroom screen pretty easily. But something else you can also do to make it a little easier for them is you can actually add the attachments right now in the calendar meetout. So I could add the PowerPoint that I'm going to be giving to you tomorrow morning to this, which is interesting because you'll already have seen it by the time you see this, but you won't have seen it yet. Yeah, okay. Give me that one. So I can click on that and I can select it and you can see it adds the PowerPoint. Um, now I can add something else. Say I wanted to go into my drive and uh, I, what's recent, I could take a look at my drive, uh, scroll through basically anything you wanted. Um, you know, there's a recent document, there's the distance learning document. Okay, I can select that and I can add it. So basically any materials you have in your drive, you can use there too. And I can save this information right here, okay? So now I'm going to go back into this meet, and I'm going to end the call. Whenever you want to end the call, 
You can say goodbye to all your students down here, make sure they're logged out, and end call. And the meeting's left, okay? And I can click off of that. But now you can see, here is the meeting that I just made directly from my Google Classroom by going into Google Calendar this way. And I can click on this, and I can join the Hangouts Meet. And I'm gonna get to the same screen again, and I can hit Join Now. Okay, so I've joined the meet that I just set up in calendar. And now if I go into here, you can see the little paperclip is there, right? So there's MYP3 ELA. And when I click on that, I can see the attachments. Okay, so this is an easy way for you to list resources for your students, which I think is actually kind of cool. It may be a bit beyond some of them. It may not be necessary for a lot, but it's actually a really cool thing. Uh, and that's it for Google Meet. I don't want to overwhelm you. You're going to get used to it. Um, you know, if you make mistakes, that's cool. Let's make plenty of mistakes. Mistakes are great, great things. We learn from them and we do better. Um, okay, that's it for now.